Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to come together to study your word. We ask that may you be with us as we start. We pray that may you send your angels to be part of us and guide us into the truth. I pray for grace on my part and on the part of the congregation. Help us all to, um, to be benefited by this study. We ask that may you uh, bless us now and may you send us your letter in, in the form of your messages. We pray that may you be with us uh, even this day, preparation day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. some things, some foundational information uh, on understanding the four, four generations which are illustrated in the book of Joel. And then, um, of course, we are not yet into, into the study deeply. Um, maybe by way of a question, Thus far, we we combined two things: Ezekiel eight and Joel chapter um, and Joel chapter chapter one, identifying those four insects as the four generations of Adventism, and also. Um, but in terms of Ezekiel, it's it's an illustration of the forward work of apostates. So. If you go to Joe, Joe chapter 1. This one uh, says, The word of the Lord that came to Joe, the son of Pethor. Verse 2. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, O ye inhabitants of the land. Is this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Do your children of it, and let your children tell their children when their children another generation. That's the reference to the four, four generations. And then um, this four says, That which the palm of him is left is the locust eaten, and that which the locust is left is the king of him eaten, and that which the king of him is left is the caterpillar eaten. And then you get to verse 5, which talks about um, a wake up time. Awake ye drunkards and weep. So when you get to the time of the awakening time, I pointed to you that this this is pointing to the midnight cry, where everyone is called to awake. But when you get to the wake up call, we have two classes. One class is um, is it, it, it has no new wine because it is cut off from their mouth. But the other class, which means it's full of new wine, was the book of Joel. Remember, it was fulfilled in the time of the Pentecost. Remember that. Mm -hmm. And in Pentecost, in Acts chapter two, we have a class um, that is mocking the disciples at Pentecost in Acts two, saying these men are full of new one. New one. So, the book of Joel, um, Peter says it's a fulfillment of the book of Joel in that discussion. Probably we'll get to that at the end. So we have um, its fulfillment in. in in Pentecost, right? And you also have its fulfillment in Millerite history. And you also have its fulfillment uh, in our time. Uh, we will give you references for that. So, we identified the new wine as something what? Is, is, is what? Who, who, were, who were there yesterday? What's the new wine? 
teaching or a doctor. But Sister White says, uh, that was not new one. It was a revelation of the old truths which had been forgotten in Israel. Uh, and, and she says, you cannot receive the new unless you know the old. Because uh, if you don't know the old, you cannot receive the new. And then um, we identified the error of the Jews. They, they professed to accept the Old Testament, but they rejected the New Testament, which is rejecting Christ. And uh, the, that era was repeated by the Protestants. They were rejecting, um, they claimed to be New Testament Christians, right? That's what they claim to be. They don't profess to believe in the Old. They claim to be New Testament Christians. But you see that the era of the Protestants and the era of the Jews is combined to illustrate the era of Adventism. Adventism. When you get to the end of the world, Adventism professes to believe both the Old and the New Testament, mm. but they don't believe what? Spirit, Spirit of, of prophets. prophets. So you see a failure of um, understanding the Old. That results in rejecting the New. I, I don't see the just saying. Still. It's just a, a summary of what we looked at yesterday. So, Sister White also identified that Christ was teaching foundational truths, but um, to the Jews, it, it was something like new, right? But it was the foundational truth. So it's the same thing with the message that is now coming to us. It seems new, but it's just a reflection of the foundational truths, which are the foundational truths of Adventism, right? If we knew the foundational truths, of Adventism, we would easily receive uh, the letter in message, the message which comes to us. So let's look at the drunkards and then we will continue with our issue. Uh, go to Isaiah, Isaiah 28. Uh, we can start in this one. It says, it says this. Who to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim? We have drunkards in, bo in the book of Job. How are we together? Mm -hmm. Now we have another group of drunkards in Isaiah. So we, we combine them together, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, uh, Who the glorious beauty is a fading flower. Yes. Isaiah 28 verse 1. It says, Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fate valleys of them that are overcome with wine. And the drunkards in Joel are drunk with wine. And the drunkards here in Isaiah 28, they are being represented as overcome with wine. Right? So who are these? Let's, let's go to verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye is for men that rule these people, which is in Jerusalem. Whoever the drunkards of Ephraim are, they are represented as the leadership of God's people. Mm -hmm. How are you together? Mm -hmm. What did you just read? Verse 14. Yeah. Isaiah 28, verse 14. So, those who are drunken in this illustration, it's referring to God's people. Uh, the leadership of God's people uh, is the leadership of Adventism, the leadership of the SDHH, they are being illustrated as drunken if the Bible is speaking more for our time. Now if you go to uh, Isaiah 29, who will tell us the issue of where this drunkenness is coming from. Go to Isaiah 29, uh, verse 11. Maybe we can start um, verse, verse 9. It says, Stay yourselves and wonder, cry out and cry. They are drunken but not with wine. So, What's what's the drunk? What's the drunkenness? It's literal. It's, literal. it's to do with what? With teachings or with the message. They are drunken, but not with wine. They they stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord is poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and and has closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, as he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. 
which book is sealed? Daniel. Um, so they do not have understanding on what? On the book of Daniel. That's the book that was sealed, which means delivered to one that is learned. Who is the learned man? The ministers. The ministers, or all those who have been to the seminaries. Right? Mm. Uh, they deliver the book to one that is learned. Uh, and then it says, um, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So the learned man is saying, I cannot understand prophecy, because prophecy is sealed. The book of Daniel is sealed. But the same book is delivered to, to the unlearned. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, and saying, read this, I pray thee, and he said, I am not learned. Uh, wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near to me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So when you, when you get to the end of the world, the learned man does not understand. Neither do the unlearned men understand as well. So it's both the head and the toe. The head and the toes are those who are learned and those who are not. All of us, we are... We are caught up in this issue, we do not understand. So it's not about uh, uh, saying uh, so and so does not know. Even us, we have a work to do to understand God's ways. Um, I will take you back to Job. If you go back to Job, So in other words, everyone has a duty to, to have the increase of knowledge and not to depend upon, upon anyone, right? Is that correct? Yes. Um, so when you get to the awakening call in Joel chapter 1 verse 5, I'm saying it's the midnight cry. Are we together? Are we together? Sure. Uh, we, does the parable of ten virgins repeat to the very late? Mm -hmm. Is it present truth in our time? Yes. yes, it is. So when you get to the wake up call, you will see two classes. The one is full of new wine, the other is, is, uh, is full of old wine, maybe. So there is a nation in verse 6. Let's read verse 6. Someone read verse 6. <coughs> For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he is the chief teeth of a great lion. Okay. Definitely when you get to the end of this study, you identify who this nation is. Um, but what we need to do now is to see these generations of Adventism and give some information on it. I believe there are some of us who have already going through this it's repetition. Uh, where can you mark the first generation? The first generation can be from which time to which time? Which generation? The first generation of Adventism. Okay. Uh, okay. From 1863. You want to start in 1863? Mm. I'll put 1844. Okay. Mm. To we can just mark 1863 here as well. Um, we ended in 1888, right? Uh, then we, we identified the second is starting from what? Hello? 1888 to. That's it. 1919. 1919. 1989. 1989. What about the fourth? 1989. 1989. To what? Sunday. 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 Then this will just be some waymarks in between. The other waymarks which are identified even in these histories, 
maybe we will we'll just talk about them. Yeah. I'm not saying this is parallel to this. Uh, there are just some issues which are in between. So let's go to, you, you won't have these notes, but I'll give you references to this. Uh, so we we'll try to go into this history. Let's read. Um, okay. In 1863, what happened? We we, we were organized, right? We were organized into a church. Um, in Gerban, in great controversy 611. Uh, Sister White says that um, that the movement of 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the God, of God's power. Mm -hmm. Then, when get to the end, it says, "But these are to be exceeded by the mighty movement under the last reigning of the third angel." So, what I understand from this quotation is, in 1863, we cease to be a movement. How it together? Mm -hmm. We become a change. We cease to be a movement. Uh, but God says. I illustrate the end from the, from the beginning. So it means Adventism is going to end as a what? As a movement. Uh, Revelation 1 verse 8, 11 teaches that God illustrates the end from the beginning and so forth. Um, if you go to Daniel 9, what, what happens in Daniel 9, 20, let's read, Daniel 9, 20, 24, 25. There is something there. Daniel 9 verse, verse 24 says, Surrender weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city. Finish the trans transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision, and uh, prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. When the Christian church came into history, um, what happened? What, what happened according to verse 24? What was sealed? The vision. The vision. And also what happened? To seal up the vision um, <coughs> and to anoint the most holy. It's fine. What I'm arguing is when you get to uh, when 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 the Christian church comes up, then uh, the book of Daniel is sealed. Seal up the vision. Uh, that's uh, Daniel 9 verse 24. And when Adventism also becomes a church, when it ceases to be a movement, the book, uh, the foundational truths of Adventism begin to be sealed as well. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Can, I yes. that again? Can I explain that again? Uh, in the history of... Um, when Christ began his way, when you get to the birth of Christ, that's an increase of knowledge. Um, that comes from Daniel, right? But when you get to the conclusion of um, AD 34, and the church eventually comes up, then the book of Daniel is sealed. Did you get it? So when you get also to the end of this reform movement, when you become a church, then the, uh, the foundational truths of Adventism, they begin, they begin to be sealed up. You will see it as we, as we progress. Uh, review and era out November 17, 1910. November 17, 1910. It says this. November. Uh, review and year out November 17. Um, 1910. It says, uh, let, me, let me get it for you. Just a moment. It 
it's paragraph 8. Paragraph 8. It says, I appeal to those who for many years have known the truth. It is time to wake up the watchmen. I have expended my strength in giving the message that the Lord has given me. The burden of all cities is rested so heavily upon me that it has sometimes seemed that I should die. The work in the cities is the essential work for this time and is now to be taken hold of in faith. When the cities are awake as God would have them, the result will be the setting in operation of a mighty movement. She is talking about a movement. Uh, this is in, this is in nine. This is, this is uh, and then she defines it. This is, uh, this is how it continues. Um, such as we have yet, such as we have not yet witnessed. She is saying there is a mighty movement, such as we have not yet witnessed. May the Lord give wisdom to our brethren that they may know how to carry forward the work in harmony with His will. Uh, with mighty power, the cry is to be sounded in large centers of population. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, going out to meet Him. She is identifying a certain movement which is future to your day, and it is led with the message of the bridegroom coming, which is the midnight cry. It's a future movement. Um, if we are here on November 17, November 17, 1910, paragraph 8. The next one uh, is. Uh, you said. You didn't get it. She is saying there is a future mighty movement which is going to be led with the message of the midnight cry. How are you together? Yes. Then our uh, great controversy 343. You know this one. The work of God presents from age to age a striking similarity in every great reformation or religious movement. The principles of God's dealing with men are ever the same. The important movements of the present have their parallel in those of the past, and the experience of the church in former ages has lessons, lessons of great value for our own time. Uh, then, Great Controversy 186 says this, uh, But Satan was not idle, he now attempted what he has attempted in every other reformatory movement, to deceive and destroy the people, by palming off upon them a counterfeit in place of the true work. As they were false Christ in the first century of the Christian church, so they arose false prophets in the 16th century. So, whenever there is a reformatory movement that is about to come, what does certain Satan do? He puts a counterfeit in place of the true. Uh, that counterfeit is placed before the true movement comes up. Um, and then in nine testimonies, 126. This is um the, the paragraph is paragraph two, paragraph one and two. It says in the visions of the of the night. Representations passed before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. She is identifying a future movement to her day. 90, In the visions of the night, representations passed before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. Many were praising God. The sick were healed and other miracles were wrought. A spirit of intercession was seen, even as was manifested before the great day of Pentecost. Hundreds and thousands were seen visiting families and opening before them the word of God. Hearts were convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of genuine conversion was manifest. On every side, doors were thrown open to them. On every side, doors were thrown open to the proclamation of truth. The world seemed to be lightened with the heavenly influence. Great blessings were received by the true and humble people of God. Uh, I heard voices of thanksgiving and praise, and there seemed to be a reformation such as we witnessed in 1844. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a movement in 1844, but here she is seeing another movement that is repeating 1844. There seemed to be a reformation such as we witnessed in 1844. Um, 
then but before this one comes that repeats 1844 what comes before it a counterfeit. a counterfeit so if the movement future to the day of sister white that is going to repeat the history of 1844 but before it there is a counterfeit that goes before it so we are now identifying the counterfeit uh, 2SM204 It says, the enemy of souls is sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among seven-day Adventists and that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. Were this reformation to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. The fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years would be accounted as error. A new organization would be established. Books of a new order would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. The founders of this system would go into the cities and do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement, right? It's also a movement, but this one is a counterfeit one. The leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they would place their dependence on human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation would be built on the sand, and storm and tempests would sweep away the structure. Um, so this is the counterfeit movement, uh, which is future also to the day of Sister White. Because if you read the next paragraph, it says, We have authority to begin such a movement. movement. We have our Bibles, we have our experience attested to by the miraculous working of the Holy Spirit. We have a truth that admits of no compromise. Shall we not repudiate anything that is not in harmony with this truth? So she is seeing two movements, a counterfeit one, which is based on um, books of a new order, a system of intellectual philosophy, um, uh, a sandy foundation, and so forth. How are we together? Mm -hmm. That's the new movement that we have here. It goes before the one that repeats 1844. Are we together? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we will now we now go into these histories from 1840 to from 1844. Uh, before I, I read this, do this history. There's great controversy four six four. Great controversy four six four. It says the enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time for such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. Um, if you read this, she is she is she is speaking in context in context of um, of the same of the same concept that before the true movement becomes uh, a counterfeit before it. And this is 464. Uh, paragraph 1. Paragraph 1. In the middle of the paragraph. Right. Uh, in those churches which he can bring under, under his deceptive power, you make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out. They will manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. What should you exalt that God is making marvelous people for them when the work is that of another spirit? And a religious guy, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world. Uh, this is this is also under the history of the Pale Angels message. Before the correct movement comes, it creates uh, excitement in the movement that is going before. Now let's 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 go to to this is this is a. Uh, this is from when was uh, Sister White's face visit? 1844. 
uh, in December, right? <coughs> uh, when was the last open visit? 1884. 1884. Okay. Uh, let's let's mark 1884 as well. From here. Um, mm. To here, we have open visions during this time period, from 1844 to 1884. 40 years. Um, it says, this is talking about uh, the visions of Sister White. It says, uh, the first one I saw Yeyev, this is uh, John Lafra. So, the first one I saw Yeyev was at the close of a meeting when she was well enough to take on a long journey. The last open vision was in 1884 on Camp Ground at Portland, Oregon. So your first vision, if you read it, has to do with what? The Portland. people on a path. Oh, yes, in Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. But it's to do with people who are on a path to, to New Jerusalem. And then they have the, they have the Lord Christ before them, right? Mm -hmm. And behind them, they have which light? The light of the midnight cry is be behind them, right? But from this light, they are supposed to to continue on having this light before them and Christ ahead of them as they go on to New Jerusalem. How are you to get? How are you to get? Huh? I, I didn't read it. I'm going fast. I'm going fast. So can I have the reference? The reference for this? Love Pro. For Love Pro. Uh, it's a um, general conference daily bulletin. bulletin. January 29, 1893. GC? Yeah, yeah, GCDB. January 29, 1893. And she says that this light uh, shows or lightens uh, uh, all the way along the path. It lightens all the way until you get to, 1893. to New Jerusalem. How are you to get? The light of the midnight cry goes with us until we get to heaven. So this is what she, she this is what uh, this brother says, uh, John Lafra. The last open vision was in 1844. And who knows why the open vision ceased? Because people didn't believe that. People didn't believe that. Mm -hmm. Right? So the Lord started to give her only what we call night visions. <laughs> Uh, but open visions were given when everyone was around, right? Mm -hmm. And you would witness the uh, the visions being being given to you. And she says it was a heavenly place to be uh, when a, when a, when an open vision is given. That's what the pioneers say. It's a heavenly place to be. But God's people were rejecting these visions, so they get shut down uh, when it gets to 1884. Uh, there's things that are taking place in um, in 1881 that we need to read before we go to to 1888. Um, this is uh, 1888 materials, page 238. Page 238. Let me let me get it just a moment. It's paragraph two thirty. It's paragraph two. Two thirty paragraph two. But I begin it um maybe slightly before. This, this is what it says. Um you seem to be surprised that I look at matters in the light that I do. You speak of the resolution that you thought ought to have passed at the general conference. What did that resolution comprehend? It virtually said that nothing should be taught in the college but that which had been taught during the past year. Now, my dear brother, I would not wound your feelings, I would not grieve your soul or discourage you, but I must lay some things open before you. I told the conference that it had been shown that it had been shown me in the past in reference to resolutions which covered the same ground. 
I said that many things had been taught in the college that was a seed sown in mines and would yield a harvest which would not be pleasant to reap. I stated that I had light in reference to this matter. Both in the Beto Creek Tabernacle and in the college, the subject of inspiration has been taught. And finite men have taken it upon themselves to say that some things in the scriptures were inspired and some were not. I was shown that the Lord did not inspire the articles on inspiration published in the review, neither did he approve their endorsement before our youth in the college. When men venture to criticize the word of God, they venture on sacred holy ground, and yet better fear and tremble and hide their wisdom as foolishness. God sets no man to pronounce judgment on his word, selecting some things as inspired and discrediting others as uninspired. The testimonies have been treated in the same way, but God is not in this. Okay, who was in the head of the educational week? He me. And uh, in 1881, he began to teach that um, when Sister White sends you a testimony, uh, it's not inspired. It's just a testimony to you. But when she is saying, but when she is saying that the Lord showed me or the angel told me, then that's inspired. But as long as she is writing some instruction to you as a testimony that's not inspired mm -hmm. so she's saying the testimonies have been treated in the same way because she's addressing also the issue to do with people who are beginning to to identify some portions of the bible as inspired and some of them is not inspired because um we have the head of we have the head of the church the president that's a uh, g mm -hmm. i Butler. In 1884, he was coming to the defense of, uh, it's speculated that he was coming to the defense of Uriah Smith because he was being um, uh, reproved by Sister White. And then he, he himself was identifying some portions of the Bible, okay, was writing some articles on, on the degrees of inspiration, the Bible, or uh, having different forms of inspiration in terms of uh, certain prophets, like Moses having higher inspiration than Paul, than Paul or, or <laughs> some other people be, before him. I just wanted to clarify, was Smith the head of the educational work, okay. educational work at that time, publishing. or publishing? Publishing. publishing. Okay, publishing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll, We'll continue on. Yeah, there's, there's a question that needs clarity. Yeah. Because I think you need to explain that the Uriah Smith he, he, he writes the book Daniel and Revelation. And yeah. it's, it's <coughs> Sister says God helping him. Help help yes. So, so I think Masika wants to understand. Mm -hmm. What happened to this guy who once writes some, who's, who at one point is writing something that's good mm -hmm. and then now is leading in rejecting the testimonies? Can you just clarify whether it was education that affected him or what, you know? Like what affected him? Yeah. It's to do with, uh, I guess, the reproof that was coming to him from Sister White. Uh, that's one thing that triggered this, 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 uh, how can we, and this controversy oh. that begins to, 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 to go on. I, I'll, 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 I'll try to get more information on other issues behind that. But what you know is, um, he is the man who, who begins to identify the testimonies. It's, uh, inspired only as God says, is only as they are given as God showed me or the angel told me. But it, but if it's just a testimony, then, then it's not inspired. Uh, then uh, she was she also identified degrees of inspiration. Okay, let's let's read. Um, this is now. 
uh, on review and error January through 1884, George Butler has 10 articles in the review and error from, from the June of 1884, 10 articles on degrees of inspiration. Um, he suggested that the books of Moses and the words of Christ were the highest degree, the writings of the prophets and the apostles with some of the Psalms. Uh, June, January through June 1884, we have 10 articles by George Butler. Uh, he says the writings of the prophets and the apostles with some of the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, and Job last, Romans, First Corinthians, 116, these are verses where he's saying they could be hardly inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, this was endorsed by the Berkeley Church and College. Mm -hmm. And then when they go, when they get published, then Sister White begins to say, some finite men have set upon themselves to, to identify inspiration in God's way, which is not good. So this is, this is happening in 1881 through 1884, just a few uh, years before 1888, are we together? Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we, we go on, and then we, we read, we have read 1888 to 38, we will we'll get to 1888 now. So this is what happens before. 1888, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy is being argued among those in high places in Adventism. Now when you get to 1888, this is uh, 12, 12 MR205. It says this, um, As I saw that the arts with which I longed to be in Amon were headlogged by prejudice and unbelief, I thought best for me to leave them. My purpose was to go from Minneapolis the first of the week. Uh, she wanted to leave Minneapolis. And then it says, um, Brother Kyogo came with a request that I should speak the next day. But I said, No, my brother. I can say nothing that many of my ministering brethren consider to be of any value to them. I must not wake and exhaust my strength needlessly. I must go away and see what the Lord is for me to do elsewhere. For I know I have a message to bear to his people. So she wanted to leave uh, this conference because people were not willing to receive messages. Then if you will go to 3SM235. Uh, I have no paragraphs for these ones. It says, an unwillingness to... Hello? 235. Yes, 235. An unwillingness to yield up preconceived opinions and to accept this truth, uh, meaning the message of 1888, lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition manifested in Minneapolis against the Lord's message through brethren E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones. Uh, by exciting that opposition, Satan has succeeded in shutting away from our people in a great measure. 3 SM 234. 1 SM 234. Paragraph 6. Okay. 4. Paragraph 6. Thank you. Alright. <laughs> 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 Are you there now? Yes. yes. Okay. Paragraph 6. Paragraph 6. Switch yeah. your phone. Yes. Mm. I hope it's the one. Okay. And I'm willing this to you to have preconceived opinions, uh, which means they came to the meeting with what they thought was truth, right? Mm -hmm. To you to have preconceived opinions and to accept this truth lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition manifested in Minneapolis against the Lord's message through brethren. Wagner and Jones. By exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded in shutting away from our people in a great measure the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. The enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency which might have been theirs in carrying the truth to the world, as the apostles proclaimed it after the day of Pentecost. Right? She is saying 1888 was supposed to be an empowerment 
illustrated by Pentecost. Are we together? And Pentecost was the early rain, which means 1880 was supposed to be the later rain. The rain. But they rejected that message. The light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory was resisted. That's Revelation 18. And by the action of our own brethren, it has been in a great degree kept away from the world. Uh, so in other words, we didn't sin only against our church, but against also the, the world. The world. Mm. Because she is saying that light was kept away also from the world mm. in 1888. Mm. Let's go to the next quotation. 1888 materials, 240. I hope it's correct as well. 1888 mm -hmm. 240. If you are there, then you can read. It begins by anyone. My brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We saw it. Mm -hmm. My brother, how can I hope to live in Amon with you when Minneapolis with you when Minneapolis with its experiences is so plainly before me? My ministering brethren came to that conference with a spirit that was not the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. They were under a deception in regard to me. What's the spirit that is not the spirit of God? My spirit. My spirit. Or the spirit of Satan. Satan. So in other words, they came with the spirit of Satan to a general conference. Mm. And then it says that uh, they were under a deception in regard to me. If the spirit of God in, had impressed and controlled their hearts, they would not have taken a position so wide of the mark in judging me, my position, and work. After plainly stating my position, I said that as long as my brethren thought I was influenced in my judgment and work by W.C. White, A.T. Jones, or Dr. Wagner, mm. they need not send me, send for me to attend their camp meetings or conferences, mm. for I could do them no good if I did come. I, sorry, I just find this interesting because you find that here, one of the reasons that was given for rejecting what Sister White was saying, was that she was being influenced by three individuals, yes. which was W.C. White, yes. A.T. Jones, and Dr. White. Yes. The same thing with Miller. Like that Miller was influenced by Himes, Leach, mm -hmm. and Stores. Yes. So there are people now who are rejecting this message mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. saying that the premier promulgators of the message are being influenced by three, three men. Three men. Okay. I find that <coughs> interesting. That's interesting. Mob and love. Mob and love. Let's go. There can be no harmony in our wake when our brethren are so completely blinded that they cannot recognize the Spirit of God as it worked through me at Minneapolis. But although I plainly stated that which the Lord had been pleased to show me, which led me to oppose the resolution, your end went up for its adoption. Did you think that Sister White would stand against you in all that conference if she did not have most decided reasons for so doing? You thought that your own judgment was superior to the light that God had given me. Would it be consistent for me to unite with you while you are of the same mind as in Minneapolis? Have I any reason to believe that you would not manifest the same spirit under favorable circumstances that uh, you did then? To my brother, I cannot sanction the spirit that prevailed in Minneapolis, neither can I have confidence. That those who are accurate by that spirit are working in the light. Uh, let's go on to this is now 1888 materials 1067. 1067. This is starting from the first paragraph. Um, it's 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 now comparing them to some biblical figures. Never before have I seen among our people such fame, self-complacency, and unwillingness to accept and acknowledge light as was manifested at Minneapolis. Um, I have been shown that none of those, I have been shown that not one of the company which carried the spirit manifested at that meeting would again have clear light to descend the preciousness of the truth, send them from heaven until they humbled their pride and confessed that they were not actuated by the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. but that their minds and hearts were filled with prejudice. Mm -hmm. The Lord desired to come near to them, to bless them, and heal them of their backslidings, but they would not hear him. 
they were actually by the same spirit that inspired Korah, Tetan, and Abiram. <laughs> Those <laughs> men of Israel were determined to resist all evidence that would prove them to be wrong. And they went on and on in their course of disaffection until many were drawn away to unite with them. Who were these? Not the weak, not the ignorant, not the unenlightened. In that rebellion, there were 250 princes, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Next paragraph. When I purposed to leave Minneapolis, the angel of the Lord stood by me and said, Not so. God is a work for you to do in this place. The people are acting over the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. I have placed you in your proper position, which those who are not in the light will not acknowledge. They will not heed your testimony, but I will be with you. My grace and power shall sustain you. In other words, she wanted to leave. 1888. Um, because the people were sitting their way above God's way. They were going into rebellion. Uh, then, um, let's jump this. We will not finish this. Let's go to the next quotation. 1888 materials, 1566. 1566 defines it in some other words. It says, I shall never think, I shall never, I think, be called to stand under the direction of the Holy Spirit as I stood at Minneapolis. The presence of Jesus was with me. All assembled in that meeting had an opportunity to place themselves on the side of truth by receiving the Holy Spirit, which was sent by God in such a rich current of love and mercy. But in the rooms occupied by, by some of our people, were heard ridicule during the camp, criticism, oh. jeering, and laughter. The manifestation, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's 1565. 1565. Okay. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit were attributed to fanaticism. Who said the Holy Scriptures as did the noble Bereans to see if the things they heard were so? Who prayed for divine guidance? The sins which took place at this meeting made the God of heaven ashamed to call those who took part in them his brethren. All this the heavenly watcher noticed and is written in the book of God's remembrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord will blot out the transgression of those who since that time have repented with a sincere repentance. But every time the same spirit wakens in the soul, the deeds done on that occasion are endorsed and the doers of them are made responsible to God and must answer for them at his judgment throne. The same spirit that actuated the rejectors of Christ wrinkles in their hearts, and yet they lived in the days of Christ. They would have acted toward him in a manner similar to that of the godless and unbelieving Jews. So she is saying, 1888 was the crucifixion of Christ. Mm. Although they crucified Christ, I don't know how to to, to say it easily. But um, in other words, yeah, eighteen eighty four. By rejecting the message, you are crucifying Christ. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry. It's here. Okay, we can go on now. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, a comment on the last one. Then you see that the message as it was coming to these people, mm. instead of ridicule or laughing or calling it heresy, mm. they were meant to go and search the Holy Scriptures yes. as noble Bereans to see whether these things were so. Yes. You know. Yes. And if they had done that, I'm sure they would have been enlightened. Yes. So so as the messages come to us. Let us not just be quick to judge and condemn. Yes. But let us be having teachable spirits where we l listen. Yes. And then we go back and search whether these things are so. Yes. And if there's truth in it, let's uphold it. And if there's error, mm -hmm. let us bring it to the group for correction. Yes. So that we all are benefited mm -hmm. uh, because we all want to go home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will continue on. We are racing at this time. Here. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, so they crucified Christ in some sense. Or 
if they lived in the days of Jesus, they would be among those who would be shot and crucified. Um, so we'll go to the next next reference. Just a moment. Right. Two M R one fifty point two. Two M R one fifty point two says this. Uh, when the wake newly started, if you are there. Mm -hmm. Point one. Yeah. It's point one. It's point one. When the work newly started in Australia was in need of help, our brethren in America desired me to visit this field. She is talking about the Australian conference. Uh, it was a new field then. It was not yet a conference, but it was the Australian field. She says, uh, our brethren in America desired me to visit this field. The age that is one whom the Lord was especially teaching. I could help the work here as others could, could not. I felt no inclination to go. And yet no light that it was my duty. The gem was a dread to me. I desired to remain at home and complete my work on the life of Christ. That's the desire of ages and other writings. But as the matter was introduced and the responsible men of the conference expressed their conviction that I, in company with others, should visit this field, I decided to act in accordance with their light. So she goes to Australia. Soon after 1888, she goes to Australia. And then uh, she goes according to their light, mm -hmm. which means she didn't have the light to go there. God wanted her to be at the center of the work, but they wanted her away. Why? Um, let's just read a bit on this issue, why she went to Australia. Um, 2 SM 239. Mm -hmm. This is paragraph two. So, no. what, what what point of this this was taking place? Okay. Um, after 1888, um, around 1901, <coughs> no, 18, uh, around the 19, 18, 1891. Yeah, thank you. She went to Australia. 1891. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. This is what she says. Actually, it's June, July 10, 1892. I hope Emily, Mrs. White, traveling companion and secretary at 5 o'clock to build my fire and your dress. I thank the Lord that I had a better night's rest than usual. My wakeful hours are including prayer and meditation. The, work, the question forces itself upon me. Why do I not receive the blessing of restoration to health? Shall I interpret these long months of sickness as evidences of the displeasure of God because I came to Australia? Or well, now she is in Australia by July 10, 1892. I answered decidedly, no, I dare not do this. At times before leaving America, I thought that the Lord did not require me to go to a country so far away at my age and when I was prostrated by overwork. But I followed the voice of the general conference as I have ever tried to do at times when I had no clear life myself. I came to Australia and found the believers here in a condition where they must save you. For weeks after reaching here, I labored as earnestly as I have ever labored in my life. My word, words were given me to speak in regard to the necessity of personal piety. She is now in Australia. She said she followed the voice of the GC. Uh, then, um, Brother Olsen, you speak of my return to America. She is in, she's in Australia. And then she says, this is now our uh, sorry. Pamphlets A T sixteen point two P H zero eight zero. Then you put sixteen point two. You can you can read together if you get this one. Hello, two minutes. Brother Osen, you speak of my return to America for three years. I stood in Battle Creek as a witness for the truth. Those who then refused to receive the testimony given me by God for them had rejected the evidences and attending these testimonies. Um, okay. 16.1. 16.1 now. Uh, for three years, I stood in Battle Creek as a witness for the truth. Those who then refused to receive the testimony given me by God for them and rejected the evidences that 
uh, attending these testimonies would not be benefited should I return. What is she saying? There's a brother who is called Osin. She is asking for Sister White to come back to, to Battle Creek. She is in Australia. You speak of my return to America. But she is saying, even if I return, the people who are there cannot be benefited with my message. Because they have rejected the evidence is attending these testimonies. I shall write to you, but should I return to Battle Creek and bear my testimony to those who love not the truth? The ever ready words would rise from unbelieving hearts. Somebody has told you. <laughs> Even now, unbelief is expressed by the words. Who has written these things to Sister White? Well, she would write some letters reproving people who are in Battle Creek, but she's in Australia. So they would say, Who has told Sister White? To say these things. And then she says, But I know of no one who knows them as they are, and no one who could write that which he does not suppose is in existence. Someone has told me, He who does not falsify, misjudge, or exaggerate any case. While in Minneapolis, he bade me follow him from room to room, that I might hear what was spoken in the bedchamber. The enemy had things very much his own way. I had no wonder of I had, I had no word of prayer, but I had my name mentioned in slaring, criticizing way. In a slaring, criticizing way. She is just giving you the things that were taking place at the conference. And also she is telling us that um, there are people who were thinking, how did Sister White know of our issues? She is in Australia, but why is she aware of everything that we are doing? in your absence. Um, then if you read one, this is now biography of Sister White by what's his name? It says uh, I'm looking for the reference for this. It's volume 4, 257. Uh, that's biography of Sister White. Mm. So it's four bio? Four bio, yeah. This must be four by um, two five seven point four. Uh, it begins with this. Um, four by two five seven point four. Mother feels more and more the fact that she is but a short time to wake, and she's very desirous of getting out of the books. Yesterday, I had a long talk with her, this is WC White speaking, and she expressed very emphatically the opinion that the Lord had permitted her to come over here and make a home in a quiet place, that she might be free to present in writing what the Lord has shown you, without personal conflict with those whose cause is an offense to God, and who are so persistent and determined in their opposition to the instruction God has given his people, but which is contrary to their feelings and plans. Then uh, in the next paragraph, this is uh, a letter, um, Ellen White, why Ellen White went to Australia, dear brother Olsen. Uh, this is in um, um, Manuscript Releases, Volume 10, page 392, 10 MR392.1, um, this is what it says. Uh, this is a letter to Olsen. It says, uh, I have not, I think, revealed the entire working that led me here to Australia. Perhaps you may never fully understand the matter. The Lord was not in our living America. He did not reveal that it was His will that I should have, I should leave Battle Creek. The Lord did not plan this. But he let you all move after your own imaginings. The Lord would have had W. S. White, his mother, and the workers remain in America. We were needed at the heart of the work, but the Lord read the hearts of all. There was so great a willingness to have us leave. So why did why did, why did she leave Battle Creek? Because the people wanted her to leave. Mm. Then it says that the Lord permitted this to take place. Those who were weary of the testimonies. <laughs> They were weary of the testimonies. Mm. Uh, born, those who were weary of the testimonies born were left without the persons who bore them. Our separation from Battle Creek was, not, was to let men have their own will and way, which they thought superior to the way of the Lord. The result is before you. Had you stood in the right position, 
the move would not have been made at that time. The Lord would have worked for Australia by other means. And a strong influence would have been held at Battle Creek, the great heart of the work. There we should have stood shoulder to shoulder, creating a youthful atmosphere to be left in all our conferences. To be felt in all our conferences. It was not the Lord who devised this measure. I could not get one ray of light to leave America. Mm. So she went, but there was no even there was not even a ray of light to leave America. But when the Lord presented this matter to me as it really was, I opened my lips to no one. Because I knew that no one would listen, would discern the matter to me as it really was. I opened my lips to no okay. Um I knew that no one would descend the matter in all its bearings. Mm -hmm. When we left, relief was felt by many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not so much by yourself, this is Olsen, Olsen. And the Lord was displeased, for he had set us to stand at the wheels of the moving machinery at Petro Creek. Mm -hmm. The Lord wanted Sister White to be always in Petro Creek, because well, that was the center of the work. But when they exiled here to Australia, then they would be free to do whatever they wanted to do. Uh, this is the reason I have written you. Yet you said I cannot bear these responsibilities alone. Who would you have responded and returned? Mm. Uh, you can you can continue on with this. Uh, but the reason why she goes to Australia in this is the people are tired of her work, especially her, her testimonies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you get to 1990. But uh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just give you the details of what happens. Um, just a moment, because we need to to end here. Huh? Because this history is very long. Um, where were we? Where were we? Okay. Uh, in eighteen ninety seven. So when people set aside the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, they begin to go into apostasy after apostasy. We have uh, Kellogg introduces pantheism, 1897. Then in Australia, she begins to rebook Kellogg. Kellogg. And then uh, you also have um, the false view of the day, 1901, which is our view even now. This is uh, this is converging. And then there is uh, 1905. Balinja rejects the sanctuary. Sanctuary. Hmm. Sanctuary. You can go and confirm all these things. Uh, then, um, Same year, 1901. this is uh, 1905. 1905. Um, and then you, you, you get to 1919, you have another conference. Sister White dies in 1915, right? Yeah. She's dead now. And, she, and those who didn't want her, of course, they celebrate. She's dead. And then uh, 1919, we have um, the beginning of the second generation. Um, I have references where Sister White says uh, there are individuals who are just only waiting for the old standard bearers to, to die. To die. Mm -hmm. And then they begin their way of Scaging. Of scaging God's people, mm -hmm. she she we I, I will I will give you those maybe <laughs> if the Lord allows. Yes, uh, then um, when we get to 1919, there is a Bible conference. We have uh, the doctrine of Christ. William Warren Prescott. Mm -hmm. He is now teaching um, Adventism without any prophecy. Uh, he taught he taught he taught uh, the Millerite message. Uh, but he didn't put any prophecy in it. So, actually, some people say he actually wanted to remove all the prophecies on the church. Indeed. Even yeah. 2300 days. Yeah. Um, there is details to this. Uh, what happens all 
in these in these generations. 1919, um, 1989, 1957. There's detail that we may add to this Lord willing next time. Introduction of false education, 1930s in Adventism, uh, and then. Um, 1957, yeah. books of a new order actually begin in 1919. 1957, we have another book of a new order, but our time is out. We'll, we'll continue on and then see how we we'll conclude this. So let's pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, we come to you this afternoon uh, thanking you for reminding us of this history. We ask that may we be warned um, and now we can be able to fall away by rejecting especially the spirit of prophecy. Um, the last deception of Satan is to set aside our faith in the spirit of prophecy and uh, may we take it to your messenger, even in our day, at the end of the world, we pray that may we uh, learn from our fathers and see where they lost their way and uh, not repeat that same mistake or mistakes. We pray that may we uh, be, may you be with us as we shall continue on in preparing uh, for the Sabbath. May your grace be sufficient for us. We ask that may you be with us. You know things in Jesus' name. Amen.